Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Pershaw Baptist Church this morning. I am the minister of this church, James. As many of you will know, some of you may be logging in from afar. Who knows? Um, as we're all aware, coronavirus is affecting us all in some ways. And today we wanted to deliver you a message online. It's going to be different. It's going to be shorter than normal because of the constraints of the internet. And uh, it's going to be like nothing we've ever experienced before. For some of us, we're stuck at home having little contact with others and uh, other than via phone. Some of us are worried. Some of us are fearful. Some of us are wondering what all the fuss is about. And many of us will be thinking, when on earth is this going to end? Just got a few notices to give you this morning before we begin. And uh, so I just want to let you know that we've done some changes to our website uh, to respond to what's going on, to help us all feel a bit more connected to one another. And uh, one of those changes is that we've added in a resources page with links to lots of different activities and videos for everybody so that we can engage with some other good resources and material that is out there. We've also added a Church Kids YouTube page, which is linked from our website on the homepage. And then finally, we would really strongly encourage at this time that we don't do any pastoral visiting. Um, we believe that God is bigger than this coronavirus, but our government have asked us to socially distance and to be self-isolating. And this is something that we must take seriously. Uh, we were reminded of Titus 3.1, which says, Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient and to be ready to do whatever is good. This is one of those times where we must indeed adhere to what they are instructing us to do. Now, as I was writing uh, this message uh, for this morning, I, I was preparing and I was thinking of Matthew 4, 1 to 11, the time when Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted. We know that Jesus was there for at least 40 days and nights. We know that he had fasted and that he was hungry. And it was in this time of isolation where the tempter came to Jesus. In this time of isolation and uncertainty, we may ourselves experience temptation in many and varying ways. Do as Jesus did. Turn to the scripture to fight off temptation. Take this opportunity to study the Bible, to learn God's word for us, and then build your offence against the tempter. This morning, we are going to continue to work through our series in Ephesians. And if you're not local or listening online, uh, perhaps you could listen, go onto our website and click on the Listen Again tab. Feel free to go through the previous three sermons in our series. And at times like this, it is extra important that we remember that God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. It would be a shame to come to church and uh, not worship, so we're going to uh, sing a song together this morning, Standing on the Promises.
great song for us to focus on, those words that we stand on the promises of God. Today, of course, is Mothering Sunday, so let's not forget that we are grateful to God for our mothers, and let us pray a prayer of thanks for mums. Lord, we bless you for our mothers. We thank you for their example of loving sacrifice. We thank you for their love and their care. We thank you that when we were young, they provided us with food. They played with us and they entertained us. They washed us, bathed us and clothed us. We thank you for the ways which mothers make us laugh. We thank you for the ways that mothers picked us up and wiped us down and wiped away our tears when we fell. We thank you for all mothers, Lord, the ones who found it easy and those who struggled with parenthood. We thank you for those mothers who are still with us and we thank you for those mothers who live with us in our memories but are no longer here. We ask your blessing on all mums who are still with us. Grant them your love, your peace and your comfort. Protect each of them in these uncertain times. In Jesus' name, Amen. So this morning our scripture reading comes from Ephesians 3, 1 to 13. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the Gospel. Of this Gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety may now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. I pray therefore that you may not lose heart over my sufferings for you. They are your glory. Thanks be to God. Now I never really thought that I would relate to Paul as much as I feel I do right now. You know, Paul is in jail as he writes this letter to the church of Ephesus. And here I am, in self-isolation, writing to you and preparing a message which will be given from afar. It's all rather strange. In his letter, Paul tells us that he was given the grace of sharing the gospel with us the Gentiles, and to make everyone see the truth of the message of Jesus Christ. And what a, a wonderful privilege that is, but what a huge responsibility it is too. And yet here, in this setting, Paul has got every excuse as to why he might not be able to fulfil that calling on his life. He's in prison for doing exactly that, sharing the message of Jesus. But what I find so challenging and so encouraging is that Paul doesn't give up. He doesn't give up on his calling to share the gospel. He doesn't think, well, I've got no opportunity to share the gospel whilst I'm stuck in this place. Instead, he sees his opportunity to share this responsibility. He takes pen and paper and he writes to his friends in Ephesus. 
And this letter also comes to us. I wonder if we might write to our friends in this time by text or via email or via letter and just encourage one another and share the gospel. Paul empowers us. He puts the onus on the church. The church obviously not being this building in which we meet in, but it's the people, it's, it's you and me, those of us who have faith in Jesus Christ. And it's now our responsibility to share the gospel. In times like this, it's almost more important than ever that we do this. So why do I say that it's our responsibility to share the gospel? Well, because in verse 10, Paul says that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might be made known. And of course, he continues on to say to the rulers and to the authorities in the heavenly places. And I believe that this has two meanings. One is that the church is the new humanity uh, described in Ephesians 2. And that is uh, for the church to demonstrate to the spiritual world the power of the gospel and the victory that Christ Jesus has won once and for all. But the second meaning is that we as the church are supposed to play our part in providing this wisdom of God in settings such as within government, within local authorities and within our friends and family. The motivation of the gospel is that we are to play our part in sharing it and to, it, and to demonstrate God's wisdom in all walks of life. The tricky question though is, have the church over recent years shirked our responsibility to do this? Or have we actually forgotten how to do this? Have we lost our confidence in sharing the message of Jesus? I've got three short points that I want to share with you from this message this morning. The first one comes from the first half of verse 5. It says, in former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind. You see, at the time of Paul, the opportunity of a relationship with God was only available to the Jews until Christ came along and died once and for all. In his death, Jesus made a way for the non-Jews to be part of the family of God. But it's this mystery, the mystery that was unknown to humankind, that I think we share the most similarities with. Today, in our, our day and age, many have largely, largely rejected God for whatever reason. And there are a great many who have no concept of God or the Bible, and so they dismiss the Christian faith from the, from the start. And this provides us with an opportunity to actually teach people the story of God and the Bible from a fresh start. But we've got to do our part by knowing it and being inspired by it. So let's get into it and let's share this hope that we as Christians have. The second point comes from the second half of verse 5 and it says that as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. You know, this part really excites me because I believe that Paul has put the onus on you and I to share this gospel. The mystery of this gospel, though, is revealed by the Holy Spirit. So the good news is that we're not alone in sharing the message of Jesus. Perhaps we've got friends or family that we've tried to share the gospel with. Maybe we feel we've blown our opportunities to share for one reason or another. Well, hope is not lost. Because it is the Spirit who reveals the mystery of the Gospel. So maybe instead of just bombarding people with the words of Jesus, maybe we need to pray that God would make opportunities for this to come about. Maybe we need to ask that the Holy Spirit would reveal Jesus' life, death and resurrection. That he would make it known to our family and friends through the Holy Spirit and through our witness to them. Perhaps we could try that. And in, in verse 3, sorry, verse 8, it says, Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ. It's so easy for us to think things like, well, I can't do this, or I'm not good enough, or my past is too bad and too well known for me to be effective in sharing the gospel. 
But Paul saying that he's the very least, and yet grace was still given to him. When we remember Paul's story, we remember that he was the one persecuting Christians. He was the one putting them to death. But he was converted when he met Jesus in a flash of light on the road. And he heard a voice, Jesus' voice, say, Paul, Paul, why do you persecute me? And what I'm excited about is that if a persecutor of Christians, if a violent man in his past can be used to impact the world for the gospel, then with God's help, you and I can certainly be effective in sharing this wonderful hope that we have too. Now, if you ever needed a motivating factor to share the gospel, then this is the time. More than ever in recent memory, people need to know that in Jesus Christ we have a hope and a future, and that those who are in Jesus do not have to fear death, for our life on earth is only temporary, whereas our life after this existence is eternal with God in heaven. Amen. Let us pray. This is a prayer from Karl Barth, which I feel is appropriate and pertinent for today. Eternal God, I pray for myself and for those dear to me. When we are afraid, do not let us despair. When we are dis disappointed, do not let us become bitter. When we have fallen, do not let us stay down. When we are at the end of our understanding and our powers, do not let us perish. Rather, let us feel your closeness and your love, which you have promised especially to those whose hearts are humble and broken and who stand in fear before your word. I pray for my community and neighbours. Lord God and Father, much human concern falls away when your dear Son, our Lord and Saviour, comes into our lives and puts everything in order. Have mercy on those who, who do not know you and your kingdom, or do not yet truly know. And Lord, also on those who once knew everything well, but forgot it again, or misunderstood it, or even denied it. I pray for the church and the mission of Jesus Christ. Lord my God, awaken your church. Give us your light. Be our teacher and our comforter. Speak to each member so that they may hear exactly what we need. What helps them? In all places, be gracious to those who gather as the flock of Christ. And I pray for all in authority for the needs of the world. Loving Father, you know the errors and the evil that mark our world. A dark and dangerous place on all sides. Blow with a fresh wind and disperse at least the thickest fogs in the heads of those who rule the world and of those who let themselves be ruled by them and above all in the heads of all who form public opinion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. We're now going to sing again, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
finally, a blessing. May you know the peace of God in you. May you have peace in the midst of this storm because you are confident of your future in God. May you be motivated by the events of these troubled days to share the gospel with all you know. And may you observe the Spirit at work, revealing the mystery of the gospel in the world around you. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless and stay safe.